Hey everybody, this is Coach Tara Woodruff, the Helpful Entrepreneur, and I'm coming to you this evening on a Saturday night to talk about something that my friend, my dear friend Leanne just reminded me of. She just posted like a 1.5 minute video by Bashar, and the, the name of the video, let me tell you, because I'm going to write a blog about it and everything. Let's see if I can find it. Um, how to, let me, let me just get it really quick. Anyway, basically what, it, what we're going to discuss tonight, or what I'm going to talk about tonight, is how to get to the the place that you want to be in your life to do, to really have an overhaul of your lifestyle and your life's purpose to really you know define the vision that you see for yourself and make it happen and it's literally the quickest most reliable way to get there. Um, the video's name is "Use Your Imagination to Match the Vibration of the Person You Want to Become." Okay, now I can get off Facebook so we don't hear any bloops. <laughs> Let me pull you back up. I need to have a sip of water. So, just hearing Bashar's voice, because I, I listened to him quite a bit, just before I went through my very seriously hard financial times, um, I was listening a lot to it, and I was realizing at that point in my life that I was, that I was really getting in tune with my vibration and understanding how much was going on in my reality or in my perceived reality, in my 3D, in my 4D, in my 5D, <laughs> that was totally, you know, really that, you know, the alignment that I was having with what was going on. And um, so I, I got that, that knowledge and as I went through that year that was very trying and I went through the past year which has been extremely rewarding and extremely trying all at the same time. Um, you know, since my granddaughter's been born, just it's just amazing the experience that I'm having with life right now. And one big thing I keep hearing people always say all the time is that they want something more, you know. They want more freedom. They want to feel more free more than anything. They want to work on projects that they love. They want to collaborate with people. They want to do some things by themselves. They want to be healthy and vibrant and happy and they you know, they want to be comfortable, they want to drive a nice car, they want to meet challenges, they want to go to the beach, they want to they want to help people, they want to do that Wells Fargo commercial where they you know, they empty their bank account and make bag lunches for people that are homeless and go and deliver them. They they want to build gardens, they want to teach, they want to share, they want to, they, they want to do all these amazing things. And people oftentimes get stuck in uh, this crazy rut kind of thing where they get like what Jeffrey Combs calls golden handcuffs. They get involved in a job and they follow the rules and they and they do these things and they get maybe brief glimpses of those kinds of things that they want for themselves throughout the course of their year. Brief, you know, brief glimpses. And they never let themselves to really focus on their vision and become who it is that they really desire for themselves. Because when we're born, I really believe that we already know. I'm so convinced of that, that we know everything. We've already set ourselves up with the type of family we're going to be involved with, and we've made agreements, and we know what we are going to become in the lifetime that we're here. The, the rest of it in between then, the knowing, and the achieving is all this giant experience in which you weave all sorts of amazing manifestation and devastating manifestation into. And when the person really finally gets to the point where they have a clear vision of what they want in their life, they have a clear vision of who they want to be like, what they want to feel like, what they want to be doing, they model in their mind that person. Now, this is, this is Law of Attraction. This is very important though. Some people get really confused with the law of attraction. They don't realize that part of the thought is part of the action. So not only do they have a clear visual in their mind about who they are becoming or who they have agreed to become in this life, they start to be that person regardless of circumstance or any kind of thing. You know, so I know the lifestyle that I'm going for and the person that I'm going for there's a very opulent material. There's a very materialistic part, an opulent part, that that's coming. You know what I'm saying? But 
what do you do to balance it out and have the total thing that you want going on? If you just have an idea about it, you know, I've got my vision board up, right? And my vision board, I would move the camera, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to put you back right. I've got a beautiful, like, apple green coach bag. I've got this jewelry, pictures of this this woman's hand picking up candy from a candy jar, and to me it represents, you know, I have my pick and this gorgeous jewelry on it, and another one sitting there smiling perhaps at dinner, talking to somebody with beautiful jewelry on, and then of course there's a picture, and I can't even remember her name. She's stunning. Old school actress, really long neck. She's stunning. That I have, I have a, a an actual dress on my on my vision board right now because I'm I'm building more pictures, I'm finding more pictures in you know magazines and on the internet or whatever. But I have a, a beautiful like uh, satin dress that I got a long long time ago to serve as an inspiration for the body size that I wanted to have. Right. So we know we already know that having a vision of it isn't enough. You know. Yes. Time will come, and you are here. You are going to be who you are, what you set out to be. It's going to happen. But if you take the back seat to it, you're going to find that that is a long, arduous journey. You know, for instance, in my case, even though I do know in relativity I'm very young, I do know that I knew these things way back when, and I was aware of them very early on in my high school years, in my 20s. And you would never know by my actions that I was fully aware of who I was. I mean, once in a while you get a glimpse of it, but I kept it stuffed. And for whatever crazy reason that is, I don't know. We all go through what we go through. And my 30s were very interesting because that's when I kind of started putting my foot down for myself. And just all sorts of crazy things got worked out. Like, sometimes you get to, like, I don't know, cleanse. And I really think that's what my 30s were about. Things were so different, polar opposite from how my life was in my 20s. Now, the interesting is that there were parts of my life in my 20s that were absolutely stunning. Most of it was. It was dangerous. It was exciting. It was adventurous. It was sexy. And then sometimes it was really ugly. And sometimes it was like, you know, so I can't say, you know, I ain't going to knock anything. I have no regrets because life is beautiful. But what I do know now is, I'm like staring over at my vision board, what I do know now is that something that, you, that it's really important for you, if you want to accelerate your learning curve or be closer to your destination, then you, you need to add this action to the vision. And that is, you have to absolutely know every detail of who you are. That means self-awareness right now in the moment. That's very, without it, you will have none of it in the now. And then you also need to know what it's like a little bit down the road. And you have to have it clearly written out for yourself. I highly suggest you buy the most expensive pen you can afford right now. No, I don't even want you to be able to afford it. I want you to expand your comfort zone for this pen. Go to Staples. I don't care what it is. But after you've eaten, that's it. You know, if you have a family, make sure they're fed. You go to Staples. Go online. It depends on where you're at. Buy the most uncomfortable pen you can tolerate. And make sure it's blue ink. And if you can get fountain pen, if you can get a little cray cray, get some fountain pen action going on, some more blood, what's up? Then do that. Um, and also, while you're out out there, or while you're at it, go get yourself the most uncomfortable journal that you could even dream of. Both of those items are going to be more than a pen and more than a journal. They're, they're going to be your Bible, and you are the prophet. So think about that. Think of it as if you were actually directly in tune with God and were to sit down and write your books. I want you to understand that that's a place you really need to get to, ASAP. And the way you're going to do is you're going to treat it with 
a sacred heart and you're going to stretch yourself with everything about it. You're going to, like I said, buy a pen that's uncomfortable financially in your physical world because what we got to realize here in the middle is that even though, like I said, my, my final destination is very opulent, the money means nothing. The money means nothing. Right now, in my little tiny house in Holiday, Florida, I can't tell you how I feel in my surroundings. When I walk into my bedroom, and it's not perfect, and it's not even close to my standard yet, but when I walk in here, I feel good. You know what I mean? I got my little crystal collection. I got my little Buddha. I got a plan. I got a nice little Victorian thingy and a marble top vanity. I love that. That beautiful picture behind. I think I just, and I'm just inviting more of it into my life. But the money really means nothing. So you have to kind of stretch yourself with your imagination and your pocketbook for that pen and that journal. Get the best you can. Make sure the paper's white. And if you can have it lined, have it college ruled lined. And, um, Blue pen ink, okay? Important. Get some sort of routine, some sort of time for yourself to actually write in that. Now, it's not particularly necessarily a journaling situation. The only thing you're going to write about in that particular Bible is the purest vision of yourself. So if you can do it all at once, excellent. If it takes you days, fine. If, if you want... A really great idea might be to spread it out over 30 days and promise yourself five minutes in that book the first day, 10 minutes the next day, and by the end of the month, you you know, I, I, I should do the math on that, huh? <laughs> Definitely commit yourself to some time in that book every single day until you have the purest vision of yourself. Now, once you have that, I want you to go back to that book and I want you to refer to it and I want you to think about things as you're going through your daily activity. When you wake up in the morning, do you wake up to the sound of an eh, 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 alarm clock? And if you do, is that something that your ideal self, your purest form, would accept as a reality? Probably not. If you do have a job and you've got to get there and it's earlier than your natural biological clock will, will wake you up, Look into magnesium salts and look into keeping your windows shades open so that as the sun rises it helps you or look into sunrise clocks. Whatever it takes to avoid that horrible sound first thing in the morning you're going to do. You're going to, ha you know, you're going to envision what do you do next? Do you, do you lay there in your bed and you feel the, the absolute wonder of 600 thread count sheets? Do you, do you know what that is? Maybe 200 counts, the best you've ever been, but you know to appreciate it, right? Because you're bringing more, bringing more all the time. Do you, do you let yourself stretch a little bit while you're still lying down and open your eyes and maybe look, glance out the window and kind of get your sight going? Do you do that or you rush right up? I mean, I've, I've actually heard people say that that's the most important thing you do is get right out of bed. I disagree. You've got to really enjoy everything about your bed. You've got to find things to like about it. I don't care if you're on a futon and the metal bars are sticking in your back. You've got to find a way to feel the way your ideal self would feel. And you have to know how to get there. And you have to train yourself to be fully aware of the good stuff. Your main focus is constantly, constantly needs to be the good stuff. So when, that's, I'm going to come to that later. So, you, you know, get that all written down in your purest self Bible. That you are the person, that you are the prophet in which God has spoken and you're writing it with the best materials that you could possibly dream of at this moment. And you talk about everything. And then when you're awake, when you're in your 3D world, I want you to constantly, I'm not talking about keeping yourself in the prison of your mind, but I'm talking about remind yourself, am I engaged? Am I engaged in this? Am I, am I, if you're making a video like I am, are you looking at the camera? Well, were you like I was before, I'm just staring off at my vision board? You know, are you are you engaged in what you're doing, even if it's bad, even if you don't know what you're doing? Are you fully there, experiencing and searching for the best in the situation? You know, you'll be able to you'll you'll train yourself to ask those questions when you get off of work and you really want to stop at the corner store and grab a 12 pack, and you just don't. 
It just is no longer in alignment with you. I am not saying anything wrong with drinking. I said get it. Have some fun. I can't wait to have a glass of scotch or 12. But what I'm saying is in every day, is your purest person even thinking of that? Coming from a responsibility or some sort of prison to their home? Would your ideal self, with the purest form of you, allow themselves to sell their time, the most valuable com commodity in our bodies, is our time? Would we ever give it up for less money than we deserve? Not our, not our pure self would never do it. So then you start thinking about that, and your mind starts opening up ways for you to walk away from that situation. Things start opening up for you. When you start brushing your teeth like your, like your perfect self, when you take care of your hair and you take care of your body and you take care of the preparation of your food and you really get in the now and you think, is this who I am? That is going to get you to the physical reality of what it is you desire faster than anything else. Faster than anything else. One thing you want to, um, and I don't want to point it out so to, that to it's at the top of your mind, but I want you to realize this. When you're stressed out, <clears throat> when you're having stress, whether it's some, it's some seemingly external force that is beyond your control, and I say seemingly strongly, or it's just you know um, some kind of monotony that's going on or something, if there's any kind of stress going on, your body has a physiological state. It is we are 3D, we are physical, we are material, we are meat, and our our amazing system in our body that runs our system keeps us in check with this fight or flight thing. <clears throat> now when you're peaceful and you're not in conflict with your pure self, you are Zen. Your body is in alignment, your things are working without thought and you're breathing okay and you're not in any disease. And everything is working much better. Your relationships are better. It's easier. Just, you know, you stub your toe, you don't even think about it when before maybe you stub your toe and ruin your day. Next thing you know, you pull your pantyhose. Next thing you know, you go in the bathroom, the, the, the toilet seat gets unlodged and you're like, ah, falling in. Who knows? Right? When you are in a state of ease, your body, your mind, your opportunities, everything is going to open up. And it will assist you in every possible way, in ways that are stronger than you could ever dream of, to get there. And in essence, what will happen is your soul, your core soul, the person that decided to come, the soul that came, will totally know that you've done it. And the magic will really start happening. Then you've got some metaphysics that are going to go down. They're just going to blow your mind. Okay, now these are things that I'm working on because I noticed that when I'm stressed, cortisol levels go out the roof, even though there's something kind of zen about me most of the time. But it's obvious that my cortisol levels are out of the roof, that I do have stress, and stress that sometimes I might not even notice because it's just what's going on. And then there's times where you're in a situation where you damn well know it's stressful and it's time for you to pull back and do whatever disengagement with the situation you possibly can. And sometimes that's very stressful. But if you are really engaged with knowing who you really truly are and why you're here and your purest version of yourself, when situations start to arise that are uncomfortable in a way that's not good, I'm not talking about uncomfortable in a way that's awesome, like challenge, but just ways that are just unacceptable to your purest form. You will have an easier time getting over those things. Your body, you know, you, you'll, you'll start to let it go. And eventually the cortisol levels will drop and you all of a sudden start losing weight. Um, you start looking for reasons to go outside. You start trying to find ways to have more adventure. You start reading more books. You change your routine in the morning just a little bit. You decide to grow a flower garden. You go to the grocery store and decide to buy something that you've never thought of preparing and go home and make it. All of a sudden, 
everything's going to start working out. So take the good with the bad, but understand this. The faster that you have that vision clear in your mind, and you treat it as if it's sacred information, and you write it out yourself with the most uncomfortable pen and paper you can find, and really put the sacredness in it, and really dedicate yourself to defining that vision, things are going to start popping for you. And don't worry, that vision might change. That's just another book. You know, if we're going to do Bible references, I've got a whole bunch of them behind me, but none of them are right next to me. <laughs> um, there's more than one book, right? There's more than one prophet vision in there, so don't be afraid of that either. That's fine. Because when it's all said and done, the true vision is always going to be there. But it looks like my dog is trying to talk to me about her vision of going in the backyard and having a potty. So I'm going to make it happen for her. I love you all. Thank you so much. And I hope this helps. If you have any questions, feel free to go over to my blog, CoachTaraWoodruff.com. Check me out over there. I have all my links there for Facebook and Google+. Plus. Reach out to me. You can always opt in and be a subscriber, and you will be able to contact me through email right off the bat because you can reply. And um, I look forward to, to getting to know you more. Thank you so much for spending time with me tonight. This is Coach Tara Wood, a helpful entrepreneur. See you later.